This is Yvonne Strahovski, and you're listening to Chuck Bezos' podcast. Hi, my name is Graham Jones, but you can call me Gray. This is my show. It's about Chuck. It's filled with interviews, the latest news, crazy co-hosts, and spoilers that'll make your day. Oh, wait, wait, I need to go back. I host these TV nights. They used to be pretty boring, but everything changed when I found NBC's new show, Chuck. Pretty soon, my TV night got pretty crowded. Guys I didn't even know were showing up the door. Big important guys. Really scary, nasty, get killed for hosting them guys. Next thing I know, these super episodes are downloaded into my brain. Which means every moment of my life, I'm thinking about Chuck. ChuckTV.net sent their top people to protect me. That's Mel and Liz. They're pretty zany. They co-host with me now as a cover. So now I must welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast. The first and only podcast for NBC's Chuck. This is Gray. This is Mel. And Liz is away this week. She will be back with us next time, but she is doing stuff with her family this week. I don't know why they take priority over us, but there you have it. You're listening to Chuck vs. the Podcast, Episode 5 for May 2008. We do have a lot of news for you, which happens when we're off the air for a while. But we are back, and we're back with lots of good stuff. That's right. And especially... Important. The biggest news this week is that production of Chuck Season 2 is starting May 23rd. They're shooting Episode 201. And because of that, we've got some spoilers later in the podcast, and there's going to be lots of exciting stuff. Now, you may ask, the show actually it doesn't air until September in the U.S. and Canada. Um, Mel, how is it important that they're shooting again? Well, for one thing, uh, for us, it's important because that means that the staff and the cast and the crew are back on the set and back in the office so we can start setting up interviews and contests and things again that means we're going to be getting some spoilers um we should be getting some production stills from the new episodes fairly soon so that's all exciting getting us kind of ramped up for the september premiere and i'm sure that the cast and crew are excited to be back after such a long hiatus absolutely i look forward to getting some interviews and i'm sure all the fans do too Moving right along to the Chuck comic book. Mel, what can you tell us about that? Well, we actually have some concrete news and artwork this time. Uh, Wildstorm, which is that DC Comics imprint that's produ- uh, publishing the comic books, has released the cover artwork for the first two comic books, as well as a synopsis and street dates. They've got, um, for Chuck number one, it's going on sale June 11th. And the synopsis for that says... In this globe-trotting, action-packed adventure, Chuck will see many exotic locales, dodge numerous bullets, and be tortured by the world's greatest tickler. And then check number two, the street date is July 9th. And the synopsis on that one reads, The hit NBC television series continues taking the comics world by storm. Chuck Bartowski and his friends continue their globe-trotting, action-packed adventure as things spiral further out of control. Will Chuck survive his first trip to Japan, or will the sexy, sword-wielding assassins on his trail be the end of him? If you're listening to the Enhanced podcast, you should be seeing the cover artwork for both comics books right now, and you should be seeing at least part of one of those sexy, sword-wielding assassins for the cover art of Chuck number two. Looks pretty interesting. Can't wait to see it. I uh, hope it's available everywhere. I guess we'll get some news out to everybody on how you get that comic book as soon as we have it. That's right. And very, very exciting. Available everywhere, at least in North America. Chuck is coming to DVD. Uh, Warner Home Video has announced that the first season of Chuck will go on sale September 16th, 2008 in the United States. The four-disc package will retail at about thirty nine ninety eight. And each of the episodes will be presented in anamorphic widescreen along with English Dolby Digital 5.1 surround tracks. Extras are going to include declassified scenes, two featurettes called Chuck's World and Chuck on Chuck, a gag reel, a gallery of web-originated mini featurettes, and a playable demo of EA Sports Madden NFL 09 for Xbox 360. You can sign up at Amazon to be notified when the set is available, and I'm sure it'll be at all the retailers. And my guess is that um, usually they they release these before the new season starts. So my guess is that's going to mean that the premiere of Chuck will be after that, maybe a week or two. Um, Mel, do you, do you know anything more about that? 
that is generally the pattern. So I would expect that we'll be seeing season two premiering around the end of September, maybe the first of October. But as soon as we have an actual premiere date, we will let you know. And I, for one, am really looking forward to seeing the extras on that DVD set, especially the gag reel. From what we've seen of these guys, there's a lot to choose from for the gag reel. Yeah, and you know, just just looking at the features and comparing to other TV shows, it seems like they have a little more than you usually see. They do, and I believe that the two featurettes um, also include some um, commentary from some of the cast and crew. Um, I'm still waiting to get exact details on what's involved with those featurettes, but it sounds like pretty much everybody involved with the show was involved in the behind the scenes and DVD extras, so we should get a lot of bang for our buck. I know that all of the cast are just as entertaining off screen as they are on screen. Indeed. And on to our next section, what I did on my hiatus. Of course, that's not my hiatus, but the hiatus of the cast and crew. And what do you have for us on that? Well, some of you may have already seen, but our very own Zachary Levi and Yvonne Strahovski were um, voted TV's sexiest stars. Um, I believe Yvonne is the sexiest female star and Zach won sexiest TV sci-fi guy. So they both were featured in a recent issue of TV Guide, and you can see uh, photos from that at checktv.net. And um, the, there's also a, a party celebrating that issue, and there's a behind-the-scenes video. So all of that media is available at checktv.net. And also, Adam Baldwin has been making the convention circuit. He participated in a convention in England. I don't know if it was his first one, but he uh, was over there, and the fans were really excited. And we actually have a report from the convention later on in this podcast. Looking forward to that. We have some more news on international air dates. Yes, we do. The series is premiering in South Africa on Wednesday, June 4th at 7.30 p.m. on Mnet, and it is currently airing in Sri Lanka in the United Kingdom, uh, the Philippines. I believe it's still on in Belgium and Brazil. And if we've missed any that countries that it's in that you know it's currently airing, please write in and let us know so we can let other folks know. But at the moment, I believe those are the international areas where it's airing right now. Very cool. And, of course, we love the fact that it's international because it means we get to hear from people all over the world. And we have a few listener emails this week. First of all, we're going to hear from Johan from Sweden. Johan writes, Hey, I just love your podcast, and I love Chuck, too. I saw the last Chuck episode a few days ago. When it ended, I thought it had to have a second season. After a few days searching the Internet, I found your podcast, and it was a big relief to hear you say there will be a second season. I will keep listening. The only thing is that the subscribe function doesn't work for me, so I will keep an eye on the site. Uh, well, sorry about that, Johan, and uh, I do thank you for your comments. Uh, I'll look into that subscribe function. Um, if anybody else has problems with the subscribe function or the website in general, please do let us know and we can look into it. All right, and thanks for writing in, Johan. We're pretty excited about Season 2 also. Yeah, we sure are. All right, up next we have Amelia from Canada. And I'll take this one because, of course, uh, everybody knows I'm from Canada too. <laughs> Amelia writes, hey there, Mel, Gray, and Liz. I'm waiting impatiently in Canada for September's return of Chuck. I was quite excited to find a link to your podcast at chucktv.net. I love hearing about the spoilers and have a few questions concerning what you think might happen in the next season of our favorite show. First off, I'm always curious about the villains surrounding Chuck and his wicked awesome team of government agents. Fulcrum seems to be the big baddie organization looking to capture the Intersect, with Tommy kind of taking a leading role when he comes to collect Bryce. But what do you think about a one-on-one -on -one villain with Chuck? Superman has Lex Luthor, Batman has the Joker. Do you think Chuck is going to have a, a one true arch enemy? And if so, what do you think he'll be like? Hmm. Well, first of all, assuming that it's a he could be tricky considering the loops we've been thrown with this show. But going along those lines, my thinking is it could be Bryce. I mean, there's already kind of a history of betrayal there, although it may be more misunderstanding than anything. Or what about Casey? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if Chuck is going to have one arch enemy. He's got people who are for him, but against him everywhere. I think about the, the higher ups and how they're willing to just write him off as soon as you have something that can replace him. Right. Um, he would have to kind of be known in order to have people take interest in him. And I, I don't think know that that's going to happen. That's true. He'd 
pretty much have to blow his cover in order for people to come, you know, make a, a focused attack on him to have an arch nemesis, which is why I'm kind of leaning towards if he's going to have one, it's someone he already knows. Though uh, I, I think everybody has sort of kind of indicated that as long as he's useful to them, they're going to protect him. But the, the key is what happens if Chuck all of a sudden is not useful anymore. Yeah, and I think that might lead into Amelia's next question. So let me read that. My second question actually involves Chuck's civilian life in the distant future. The poor guy was expelled from Stanford for something he didn't do, but now that he's helping the government and now they know he's innocent, do you think he's going to get some sort of pardon? I mean, it's somewhat implied that Chuck will either have to be killed or relocated once the Beta Intersect is up and running. But if he doesn't, do you think he's going to get some sort of reward in return, i.e. a better paying job than a nerd herder, herder at the Buy More? Uh, my response to that is I, I don't think they're going to lose the Buy More because it's central to the show. And and again, I think for him to receive an official pardon would be to blow his cover. And I think the nerd herd is actually the perfect cover for him because who's going to suspect the manager of a group of computer fixing geeks or I'm sorry, nerds as some top secret government agent? Yeah, exactly. Hiding in plain sight. Exactly. It's going to be interesting how they take it higher. Obviously, the stakes always have to be raised in a TV show from season to season. We definitely are going to see new villains. We definitely are going to see this whole new intersect thing play out. But I don't know. I don't know where they're going to take it. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. So thanks, Amelia, for your questions. Keep them coming. And the next one is from Jorge from Chile. Nice accent there, Gray. <laughs> Jorge says, hey again, Gray. Sorry for writing so late. It's been almost a month since your last podcast. Thanks for reminding us, Jorge. Thank yeah. you for a very entertaining show. And also, it was very cool that you mentioned me. My favorite no awkward moment is when the Buy More staff goes there the day before Black Friday and Morgan tells Chuck when he's leaving, what about Black Friday? It makes Jeff fall to the ground. And in the same episode, when Chuck says, pineapple, and Morgan drops a box on the poor Jeff, and then he also gets hit with the megaphone. Those moments are hilarious to me. Also, kudos to the three of you, and I hope to keep listening to cool podcasts. Thanks for writing in, Jorge. It's good to hear from you again. I agree. I love that pineapple line, but it's too bad that poor Jeff keeps getting things dropped on him. The minor characters, including Jeff, are so key to the show, and I do think that physical comedy is a really, really key part of the show. I agree. I love that it's such a fleshed out cast with so many different... It, I mean, it's obvious that Chuck has his nerd herd world, he has his personal world, and then he's 